Hey there, everybody. Um, this is Chris. I uh, wanted to show you guys what I've been working on. Um, I've been curious about Hero Quest for quite a while. Hey, by the way, this is my first video. <laughs> um, this is my new channel. Um, haven't quite named it yet, but it's. it's uh, I will probably probably soon. Um, it's a solo. This is kind of like a solo gaming. How I solo game. There's a few awesome solo gaming uh, channels out, out there. Uh, Geek, Geek Gamers is an awesome one. Um, shout out to uh, Questwise. Um, just, you know, I, I think it's just a... I've had enough material to kind of um, get into doing these videos. I, and uh, we need more content on YouTube, so... <laughs> so there we go. Um... Hero Quest, it's tough because, you know, it's so dang expensive right now. And uh, the price is really shot up in the hundreds of dollars to buy uh, the whole set of Hero Quest. You can buy it a little bit at a time, nickel and dime it. But what I decided to do, and I've been working on this already, is just kind of do my own. Um, forgive the thumb there, I'm, I'm drinking an energy drink. Uh, I've been working on my own tokens for a while, and you can see some of the videos on my other channel, uh, Mustang 7, I've been doing these, these are, I got these little containers from the dollar store. A lot of my stuff, um, you can find in the dollar store for cheap, you just have to be willing to put in the time to do them and have a little bit of artistic spark in you. I don't have enough room for miniatures, okay, all my stuff has to be portable, you can only have so much role-playing stuff, books, uh, miniatures, statues, whatever, before it's like, you know what, I'm running out of room, and you either got to sell your stuff, give it away, or throw it out, and I'm not throwing stuff out. But, you know, I can't quite give up my stuff yet. Um, so I've been making these tokens, uh, like in Roll20, um, and I, I draw them, and I color them in with marker, um, I put them in the copy machine and copy a whole bunch of them. And uh, same with this right here. This is from poster board that I got at the Dollar the Dollar Tree. And uh, this stuff is really fun. This is good stuff. This is like a... Um, oh, it's like... Uh, you put it on the bottom of your chairs and stuff to move them. I forgot the name of this stuff. But you can buy it at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. They give you a whole bunch of it. And you just cut it up, and they have some already cut out, these kind of uh, circles. And they perfectly land right on there. You just have to measure out the squares, tile squares for your dungeon. And marker. Use some gray marker here. And um, if you put the padding on the bottom, they're easier to pick up. Or they're going to be more of an important role in your game. Like uh, some of my heroes have, they have this padding, so they'll be easy to pick up. And some of the, the villains in this, or monsters in this game are, are mummy. You know, I put a padding on that. Maybe I should. I can just go like that, move them around like a hockey puck. And marker. Marker them up, man. Even if you don't have much artistic ability, you could probably do something or work something out with somebody. Um... Or just find images that you can print out if you want to spend the ink on it and then cut them out. But I like making my custom monsters. It's been a lot of fun. Check out my orcs. I think the orcs came out pretty well. And there's a lot of orcs in this game. Uh, uh, Xandor or Xander. I think Xandor. <laughs> I put him off to the side like he's watching the whole time. And so this is pretty much what I work with. Oh, here's one more. Here's the gargoyle, <laughs> which I used from a, my Lone Wolf campaign. It's pretty close enough to a gargoyle. Um, so this is what I use. And I have limited table space. So everything that I need to use, I'll, if I'm playing, especially if I'm playing um, the Quest, which you can find a, a program... Hopefully it'll work on your laptop or computer desktop. Um, uh, HQ 
something. Dang it. It's if you go to the old uh ye old ye old in I think dot com or dot net, one of those, I'll try to post the links up. Um they'll ha they have a program that can run the quests. So you can play the solo quests on, on an overhead view on your computer. But I always like I I'll do that, but I'll I'll always have the the guy the combat take place on this tile. Sometimes you'll have a character that's fighting. It's rare, I think, but that you'll have a monster follow you out into the hallway. And you can use one of these. So let me show you my... I have one one dwarf miniature I bought back in the day for D&D uh, &D Edition 3.5 or 3.0. And uh, sometimes I'll, I'll put them on there as well. Mix them up with the tokens. It still works. But I'll put him over here if he's outside of the of the room. And I can keep track. This could be, this hallway doesn't have to be right next to this room. This could be any hallway anywhere on the board. Just know that that character's in the hallway fighting, you know, maybe another goblin or something like that. And let me show you. This is my barbarian, you know. Once I get my barbarian uh, miniature up and running, it'll be cool, but this is good for now. Bought these at the dollar store, these little plastic arrow things, and taped them on. And I'll get, I'll show you why I did that too. As well as, it's good to point which one he's attacking. Maybe if he's attacking diagonally, you can kind of do that. But it's got another purpose. Um, my wizard, again, the padding. He's, he's a major character uh, archetype in this game and other games as well. For Against Darkness, anyone? And a dwarf... But I already have my dwarf miniature, so I'm not that worried about it. But I can still use this for another purpose, and I'll show you a little, a little bit here. My elf, I put padding on him because he graduated to be like a major character. And uh, let's see what else? These are awesome. These little cubes. Oh my gosh! I've used the whole bag pretty much to make dice. Um, I've made this a treasure chest using a marker. Drew you know, there's the front of the chest. And you can even do a, a scenario, let me move these guys out of the way, where you're rolling, and to see if there's any treasure in the chest, you can roll it. No. It's empty chest. Keep rolling, empty chest. Empty. Empty. And some of these I put like a, a dart on the bottom, so if you roll the dart, then it's trapped. So you could play it that way. Let me get to come on. It's gotta be. Let me get to the gold, baby. Let me. There it is. You roll. You get the pot of gold. You get the treasure chest full of gold. Or you can always turn that up. And, oh, there's gold in it. And it's a nice visual for your for your uh, game. And uh, these are pretty dang cheap. I think I bought a whole bag of them for probably five bucks or less at Michael's. Or, or I think I might order them online, but I'm sure they have them at Michael's. Anyway, um, so I went to Ye Old Inn and I printed out um, a whole bunch of um, the cards because you can buy the cards individually, individually on eBay, but that's going to cost you a bit. So I'm, I just I've made my own. Thankfully, they had the templates, and I have the Falling Rocks. Use the padding for that. I cut it out so you can pick it up easier. I have like the blocked terrain. Because the thing was, I just wanted to play this dang game. You know? I wanted to see what all the fuss was about. I didn't want to spend hundreds of dollars just to buy the game. Even though everything's awesome on it. I wanted to make my own. I already had some of it. I was already half done with all the guys. Um... Spear trap. Just cut it out from poster board. Mark, put marker on it, and that works. It's a good visual. Um, pit it falls in a pit, and these are easy enough for me. So, you, so I get the gist of how the game would go down if I had the had the set, the complete set. You know, just make your own. Um, the monster cards. Let me show you what I did there. Yeah, these look like they're coming out blue on this, but they're actually purple. But cool, I like the U of M colors. Um, three by five cards, cut them out. 
using the monster t stats, and you can keep track of how many hit points you're doing to them. You can't do that necessarily on the on the official cards. They just give you the stats, which I, I bought them anyway because they're pretty cool. But I'm like the heck with this. I'll just these are more practical because I can keep track of them. You know, because some of them take multiple hit points, and you ha you, you can lose track of how many monsters have how many hit points. And all the same size, the spells, uh, I printed them out and just uh, used a uh, glue stick to keep them on. Sometimes they fall off, so you got to make sure you, you keep them pressed on there for about 30 seconds. You know, because the glue st stick strength isn't, isn't as strong as probably regular glue. Yeah, here's the water spells, the earth spells. You know, that works. That works for me, for my purposes, just playing the game. Artifacts. You know. Let me show you the... Equipment. You know. I gotta erase some of the pencil marks on that, but... Chaos spells. You know, just some something on there that... And you can just write maybe CS if you don't have any artistic skill or whatever, you know, just to or, or or just do some kind of design so you know what's what. So those are my cards. And use the three by fives from the dollar store and we're all good. Let me show my doors. These are my doors. Poster board. Just bent the bottom of them. Really I could I could do the other side too, but I didn't want them to bleed through. And boom. Lines up nicely. So if your dude needs to make an exit. One, two, three. And he goes through the door. You can do that to make it look like an open door. Or you can just take the door out. It's open. But these work. And they're cheap. And you just you just need a decent marker set. You know? And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't like spending a lot of money on color ink. It's just, it's a lot of money. So, I still have a marker set that I used from the, in the 90s. And it's still, they're still working. They're awesome. Uh, I wish I could, let me show you the, the company. Or the Prismacolor. These are fantastic. I mean, you can tell. It's from the 90s. <laughs> and they're still working, man. And I don't have to spend money on ink uh, color so much, depending on what it is. So yeah, do a whole bunch of these doorways. Um, dice again. I use the dice template that they have on the old inn, or just Google them, and they show you the whole all the sides. I still have to do the details and the shields, but they work fine. They work fine. Um, Treasure cards, all right, three by five cards, and just glue the printed out black and white cards on there. And I drew something to let me know oh, it's a treasure. Um, also, if you're a fan of Hero Clicks, Silver Samurai, that's good for a Chaos Warrior. Looks a lot like them. So, and they fit perfectly. Just about perfectly on these squares. You know. That works pretty good. Um, best part so far. Um, also all the rules and everything. They're on the website yield. And you can print those out. I printed those out. This is awesome. I got this from a, a Fortnite. And I, I hate promoting Fortnite because they're all over the place. I'm sick of hearing about Fortnite. Um, it's a torture rack. Now this can also this was used for this can also be used for a bridge in an art role playing game, another role playing game. But that works just as good for a torture rack. Um, there's a whole bunch of goodies in this uh, plastic treasure chest that I got for another game. Um, but I bought it as a Fortnite. It's got like a whole bunch of stuff for Fortnite and, and items and stuff. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it was only like 10 or, 10 or I think 10 bucks. 
It was perfect for this. Um, bookcase that I was using already for Call of Cthulhu. You know, poster board and marker. Or bookshelf. Uh, cabinet, top of the cabinet. And I knew what furniture, how many pieces of furniture to make from the from the list, the rule book. Sorcerer table. This is actually purple. I put padding on it to give it a little bit more, just a little bit more depth. Again, you can buy these on eBay, but it's going to nickel and dime you to death. You know? I figure I just, I want to play. Let me just make my own the tomb. And they're fun to make. And it, it's a great way to pass the time. Um, stay creative. Weapons rack. Let me show you that that fits pretty good on there. And it blends in pretty dang well. Um, all these are good for other role-playing games, too. So it's got a double, double function. Table. Look at that. This is a bit of a thicker, thicker one. And... It gives it a little bit of depth that rises off the bottom. Cast a shadow. Um, throne. Desk, which is for the Call of Cthulhu, but it looks a little modern, but not. that's still all right. You'd be all right. Middle Ages having that. Fireplace is just, nah. You get it. It's a fireplace. There's some fire coming out. You know, it's not as cool as the 3D fire fireplace one, but it's there and it works. And just something extra. But yeah, that's pretty much most of the furniture. I might be short a bookshelf or so. Um, but yeah, I just lay that down. Let me show you how something like this would look. Because I got limited space in this room I'm in. Um, Wizard. Mark. Um, let me take the rack out. Put a tomb. The tomb's really cool. You know, oh, let's put the treasure chest on there. And you got yourself a hero quest room. You know? And it's a nice visual to play. Solo or, hey... Say you don't have the, or the, the program doesn't work, and you just want to start playing, make, may, maybe make up your own scenario for Hero Quest. Check this out. I made, ooh, excuse my, my stomach there. <laughs> I made a list. This is um, an oracle, or like a mythic chart. Um, so you did random random tables here, so you can determine if there's furniture in the room. Um, also, I made a random dice that says yes, no, but... Let me show, show you that. Sorry, it's going to be a longer video. <laughs> yes, but, no, yes, and. So I can roll that before I go in the room, and then if, it's got, if I roll yes, um, that means there's this furniture in there. And I roll one on the furniture on a 10-sided die. And are there monsters? Yes. Okay, then I'll roll a dice 8 to see which monster's in it. Um, is there a secret door? You know, you roll for traps. Um, again, this no, no traps and something else good that's beneficial. And maybe treasure. Um... This is kind of a cool... I use my four-sided dice for an AI for the monsters. Um, which way did they want to go before they come up and attack or during an attack. However, I want to do that. Chase die. Roll random die. So if you leave the room, do they chase me out of the room? No. So it's handy to have just a little AI die like that. So that's really handy for making your own adventures. Um, I just had an adventure I, I made where they, they went in, they ran to clear out two rooms. And it took a bit over an hour because Hero Quest games can go on for about two hours, two and a half sometimes. They're long games. Um, printed these out at Ye Old Inn. And uh, just your character sheet for every guy. I made them big because I want to be able to grab them, not have them fall all the time. 
limited space. Now this is what I was getting to. I'll try to wrap this video up soon. Um, this is what I was getting to. Printed this bad boy out. I stretched it out. So if you have the table space, um, this is where these little tags come in handy. So maybe your character is in the hallway. You can keep track of where he is that way. And one, two, three, four, five. And then you can draw like a little door right there, just mapping the overhead. And then once you get into the room, and you could set that aside somewhere flat. Okay, what's in the room? Well, there's a door here. Um, is there any furniture? Yes. And, okay, so there's furniture and I'm assuming maybe treasure then. So I'll pick a treasure card. All right, I got potion defense. Bam. You know, so you, you see how it's kind of working out. Um, roll for furniture. Oh, I already did. Um, yeah, so there you go. Roll for monsters. So it works as a overhead token and an actual token too. Uh, unless you get a, until you get a miniature for them, that'll work. Let me show you also what I bought at the dollar store, which is awesome. It's like a makeup tray, and I could fit most of the game in this thing on my desk, so it's all organized. The dice and everything are in there. Yeah. Um, I made cards. The uh, player cards. Because again, I didn't feel like spending the money just for the their cards. I can just make them myself, customize them. A little sloppy at the writing, but I get the point. Elf, stats. You know, I use a paper clip if they have something that carries over to the next game. Dwarf. I made the dwarf look kind of like Golden Axe. Dwarf and Golden Axe. So there you go. I um, just want to show you what you can do to home make if you have some time. Oops, sorry. Um, to make your own game. And a lot of it can carry over to other games. So, yeah. This has been Chris. Um, and, uh, yeah. I'll uh, hopefully uh, have another video. I'll try to make them maybe every two weeks or less. If, you know, because I think they're... It has to be more more gaming content, more solo gaming content, and just more content in general on YouTube. Um, but thanks for watching. I'll wrap it up. See ya.